and welcome to Good News Rhode Island, the show about Rhode Island and the people and places and events that make Rhode Island a great place to live, because all of these people are working behind the scenes to build our communities. You probably know some of them. Today we're going to be talking about history, the American Revolution, particularly history in Rhode Island, but then further on into New England. And I want to welcome Norman Damaris, who is uh, Professor Emeritus from Providence College, a historian and author of all of these books about the revolution. And I'd like to welcome Kirk Hindman, who's here from Massachusetts Antique Arms Collectors Guild. Is that right? Is it a guild? It's a club. Club. Um, and he is here because he and Norm do reenacting together for Rhode Island. So we welcome you both. Um, you probably know much more history than I do by many, many books, but I welcome you here. We're always interested to learn our background and what is, what is fact, I guess, about our background. So we want to start with the beginning of Rhode Island. Rhode Island had an interesting beginning, in my opinion. I love the story of Roger Williams. Would you like to embellish on that at all? Well, the Pilgrims came to Boston, or actually they came to Plymouth in 1620. Uh, they founded Boston in 1630, but by 1636 and 1638, they had already expelled uh, Anne Hutchinson and Roger Williams. Uh, they came here in search of religious freedom, but they didn't give relig any religious freedom to their own people. So uh, Anne Hutchinson and Roger Very Williams. Very interesting point. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Anne Hutchinson and Roger Williams both came to Rhode Island. Uh, Roger Williams founded the state, and Anne Hutchinson was the first woman to found a city in Rhode Island. She uh, she bought the land for uh, what became the town of Portsmouth um, from the Indians, the Narragansett Indians. Both Roger Williams and uh, Anne Hutchinson purchased the property from the Narragansetts. And uh, Anne Hutchinson purchased uh, the, the, the area of Portsmouth uh, for uh, 20 winter coats and 10 garden hose. And, garden um, hose? Hose, so like a rake? <laughs> you know, the, oh, a hoe. Oh, oh. A hoe. Um, so that's, that's what she purchased the property for. Uh, and what is for. a winter coat? It was wool rather than... A winter than, coat was wool. It was rather heavy than, wool. than fur. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, these were in great demand by the Indians and or the Native Americans, and um, uh, so this is what they agreed on uh, for uh, for purchase price, and uh, they founded uh, it, they founded the state. Then uh, William Blackstone, who was also uh, from came down from Boston, he established the area of Cumberland and, and Lincoln, um, and so the, these were the the first the first towns to be established in the state. They were dissidents. Yes, they were dissidents. And and so that's why they were called what the garbage dump of New England or the sewer of New England. I've never I've not heard that. Cotton that. Mather called Rhode Island the sewer of New England. Oh, okay. England. But you know, I feel very proud that they did all they that they did. So um, as things went along, then there was more. Uh, negotiation with the native peoples and also more purchase of land, yes. more settlements. And so how do we get to the Revolutionary War? Well, <clears throat> the Revolutionary War uh, started, well, at, it, the seeds of the Revolutionary War was, uh, were, were sown at the, uh, the time of the French and Indian War, which is also called the Seven Years War. At the end of the Seven Years War, the um, Canada and all the French territory, uh, all the, the territory that was explored by the French, became British territory. So, um, if you look at a map of, uh, of of the colonies, uh, Canada extended all the way down the Mississippi and the, the Hudson, the um, Ohio and um, uh, down to New Orleans. Huh? Down they they went all the way down to New Orleans or down to Louisiana. So. Uh, the colonists wanted to expand territory west of the Appalachians, but one of the stipulations of the peace treaty was that uh, there would be no settlement west of the Appalachians, but the colonists continued to, to settle west of the Appalachians, which uh, pro further provoked the, uh, the Native Americans, and there was a lot of hostility. And um, 
the cost of the, uh, the war, uh, the, the Seven Years' War, as well as all the previous wars, uh, the, all the colonial wars, were borne by the, uh, the British government. Of course, we were all British citizens until 1776 when we declared independence. So when, uh, when, when we hear about Paul Revere riding through the countryside yelling, the British are coming, the British are coming, doesn't make any sense because we were all British citizens. Um, that's almost comparable to if we had a riot and uh, the state police would come by and we say, well, the Americans are coming. Well, you know, we should be saying that the, the police are coming or something like that, <laughs> the National Guard. Um, so anyway, um, the, uh, the British government was, was in um, dire straits trying to, to, to pay for uh, the, uh, the war, so they had to increase taxation. Uh, now, the, Americans, the, the American colonies had never been taxed by Britain for revenue in their 150-year history up until this point. So this is the first tax for revenue. And this angered the colonists because uh, we, we have the, the famous uh, uh, statement, uh, no taxation without representation, because none of the colonies had any representation. Even the Irish colonies had no representation in parliament. But uh, now the, the, there's an attempt to tax the colonies. So Massachusetts in particular uh, revolted. Uh, actually, they, they had all kinds of uh, protest against taxation. So you had the, the Stamp Act uh, and the, the Stamp Act protest. Uh, we, we hear about the, the protests and the riots in Boston, but there were also riots in Newport. Right. Why don't um, we talk a little bit about Rhode Island, um, the Gas Bay, for example, which is a little bit after this, maybe. Uh, but in, a lot had happened in Rhode Island to make Rhode Island sort of an <coughs> independent thinking state already. The king, yep. Charles, had uh, commissioned Rhode Island, essentially. There's a beautiful uh, document in the State House of the king's commissioning. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Um, okay. The, the, the charter essentially uh, sets up the state and the parameters uh, and, and grants the, the territory to, uh, to the state. Now, Rhode Island was the first, uh, the first colony to revolt against Britain. Uh, we declared our independence on May 4th, 1776, uh, a whole two months before uh, the rest of the colonies and, and Congress revolted. Okay, so let's get that fact straight again. Rhode Island was the first state to, state to revolt against the British in 1774. Correct. Uh, 76. 76. Yes, okay. May. So three months before. Yeah. Yeah, the Gatsby affair um, uh, was just one of the pivotal things that happened uh, in Narragansett Bay. Narragansett Bay was um, Providence and was, they were doing a lot of shipping and the taxation fell on vessels um, and they, the, basically the merchants of Providence were basically trying to run the taxes and not pay them. So they put up revenue cutters and one of these was the Gatsby. Uh, the Gatsby um, was in pursuit of a packet ship called the Hannah, and she ran aground off of, it's, I believe it's uh, Gatsby Point now, and uh, they're waiting for the high tide to basically float her off. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Brown and Abraham Whipple decided to seize the moment. They went over and uh, boarded the Gatsby. Uh, the Lieutenant, she was float. the lieutenant. Oh, yes. Actually, she was just run aground, oh, she and is. she couldn't bring her cannons to bear or anything because she was basically just high and dry. So they boarded her with small boats. Um, a young man named Buckland actually shot the captain, who was uh, Dunningston, and uh, they seized the Gatsby and took the crew off. And then they burned her to the water line. Uh, they put the men ashore. The captain was treated by a local doctor who actually, the captain paid him with, I believe his shoe buckles. Um, <laughs> and uh, people were seen walking around with the captain's hat. There was a big reward put out by the British government to um, uh, turn over the perpetrators and nobody came forward. And it was a huge reward. I believe it was $5,000 oh, yeah. and uh, nobody came forward. So the Gatsby they affair. They were all loyal. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, one of those things. It was a Rhode Island thing. <laughs> but you know, so few people know this nationally. So few people in Rhode Island probably know mm -hmm. about the Gatsby. Yeah. 
the the whole plan for uh, for burning the Gatsby was uh, decided at a meeting in the Sabin Tavern in Providence, which is right near uh, where the, the Roger Williams uh, Memorial is today. Hmm. Owned, owned by a man named Bucklin, I believe, who was Bucklin the fourth, and Bucklin the fifth is the young man that shot the captain of the Gatsby. Uh -huh. So he was he was an eighteen year old kid, and he was. He was on the raid, and he, he acted a little bit over and over. Uh, yeah, he was a little over enthusiastic. Uh -huh. All right. So after the Gatsby, um, what happened in Rhode Island? Um, the uh, Portsmouth had already decided that it was a community, right? And they, they had their own charter. Yes. Well, Newport had a charter. I, I think the, the state had the charter. Each each town has its own. I suppose it's. Maybe it's like a subcharter or something like that, mm -hmm. but they, they they had their own sort of like local government. And so when uh, there was taxation, they felt that they were independent and they did not need to pay. Is that right? Or they yes, did they, not want to? There were a whole series of, of, of acts called the, the Townsend Acts mm -hmm. that were designed to, uh, to raise revenue. The, the, the Molasses Act, the Sugar Act, um, must have been a tea. And the tea tax. Uh, the tea tax was the, the most important one. And just about every, well, just about every port city uh, had riots uh, over, first of all, the stamp, uh, the stamp uh, acts, uh, so that when the Stamp Act came into effect, there were no, st no stamp agents still in office. And because of threats on their lives, uh, they... Uh, they, they all resigned their commissions. So the, the Stamp Act was repealed actually before it was supposed to go into effect. Uh, so uh, dissonance had already started in a, throughout New England yes. at that point. Yes. Yeah. And people were pretty, uh, the Tories were in Newport. Is Primarily that right? Newport, yeah. But the rest of the states were pretty much supporting the idea that, that they would become independent. Correct, yes. Okay. So we have some maps here. I wonder if they're relevant to your discussions right now. Uh, they, they come at a later period. L later. I, they come uh, toward the end of the war uh, in 1780 when the, French, uh, when the French arrived. Okay. Let's stay with this then. So what else did Rhode Island do that showed its dissonance? Or <coughs> what else do we not know about that actually helped the revolution? There, there were a lot of riots in Newport. Uh, if, you, if you read the, um, the Newport Gazette, uh, just about every week there's, uh, there's a riot going on for some reason or other. And that was because of uh, the taxation and um, the, uh, the various means that the government was trying to impose to, uh, to get revenue. And this was the people's way of showing their displeasure. There were also numerous incidents of trying to run the blockade. Uh, the Gatsby had been burnt. Other British ships were brought in. Uh, the HMS Rose comes up. Uh, she's a, uh, she was actually used in the movie Master and Commander, the replica of the HMS Rose. Um, so she was a much more substantial ship, and a pretty much uh, with a little squadron of ships were shutting down. The Rhode Islanders were getting pretty upset about the whole affair. And um, shortly after, the British actually come into Newport and actually invade and take Newport, the island of Aquidneck, which Newport is on, and seize it. Yeah. After the British left Boston, they went to Halifax, Nova Scotia uh, for a period of time. Then they went down to uh, New York City, but uh, they came up to Rhode Island. Uh, they liked Rhode Island so much they stayed three and a half years. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but at some point they left and the French took over. Yes, yeah. Uh, uh, the the, I the British were here Newport. from uh, December 6, 1775, 76, uh, and they stayed here till 1779. Now, when the French joined the war in 1770, they, they actually signed the treaty in, on February 6, 1770. Nine, and you know, 1778. Eight. Yes. And uh, so they they had been helping uh, the American colonies uh, f for a considerable amount of time. You know, right from 1776, uh, they were already supporting the colonies. Uh, they had sent over more than three million pounds of or three million leave of uh, of, of material, clothing, uh, equipment, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, to support our troops. And then uh, they had, 
one of the French, uh, one of the Frenchmen, uh, Pierre Caron de Beaumarchais, who was the author of uh, *The Marriage of Figaro* and um, uh, which became an opera. Uh, he was the, the the founder of this company called uh, Rodri Cortale et Compagnie, which was supplying all of this French uh, surplus to America uh, at uh, ridiculously low prices. And um, so anyway, when the French joined the war, then they became uh, overtly uh, involved in the war. And they supplied us with, uh, with ships and so on. They sent over uh, a navy uh, under Admiral Destain in 1778 in, in August. Well, actually, they arrived here in July. And they were going to um, get involved with the Battle of Rhode Island. The Battle of Rhode Island is something most people know nothing about. I didn't know until I started looking in for this television show. So tell me, what is the Battle of Rhode Island, and how did it happen here and not other places? And what, ha what was the outcome? Well, the Battle of Rhode Island was the first attempt of the French and Americans to cooperate in expelling the British from Newport. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the French arrived. Uh, they were going to come to, um, to New York and attack in New York. But they couldn't get their ships over the sandbar. So they came to Rhode Island instead. And uh, when they came here, they, instead of coming in through the harbor, they went around uh, Jamestown. They, they took the West Passage, went uh, around Jamestown, and came down to, uh, to Newport from the north. The British were so afraid that they uh, sank a number of ships in the harbor to prevent uh, the, the, the French from, from proceeding and, uh, and occupying the city. However, uh, the French ended up going out of the, uh, the harbor uh, along with the British fleet. They sailed about 90 miles off the coast of Newport, where they uh, engaged in a little bit of, of action. Uh, there were a few ships fighting against each other, but uh, the biggest uh, combat was against the storm. They had a hurricane that, uh, that, that uh, destroyed both, both fleets. Uh, the British fleet ended up coming back so battered that uh, they went to New York to refit. The French fleet went to, to Boston. Um, so consequently, we had no French soldiers here. Uh, General Sullivan was uh, already uh, amassing a number of militia. He had uh, about 10 to 12,000 men up here in, New in Tiverton. They were gathering at uh, Fort Barton. And uh, when the British evacuated Fort Butts, uh, which is right here, uh, he saw an opportunity to, to take over that fort. So he was going to cross his men from uh, Fort Barton to Fort Butts on, on, uh, at the beginning of August. However, the, when the British evacuated it, it was a day or two before the anticipated attack on the fort. Uh, the, the French thought that, the, that Sullivan was uh, grandstanding and uh, coming to, to try to get all the glories of war. So they were a bit angry and miffed at, uh, at Sullivan's action. Um, anyway, this was uh, still before the, uh, the, battle of Ro the actual Battle of Rhode Island. Um, he had about uh, 10 to 12,000 men up there on, at, uh, at, at Tiverton, but these men were mostly militia. And their term of duty, for the most part, were going to expire at the end of the month. So if he was going to make any action, he, he had to do it rather quickly. Um, one of the reasons that he was very hesitant was th that these militiamen were inexperienced. So they were not, barely trained. And one of the big political issues was all the widows that he would have to deal with after the battle. Um, and he didn't want to deal with that. These so, men were mostly farmers, I assume. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. farmers and, and local. And, and they were from residents. Massachusetts, too. Yeah. Um, so he brought people down. And they were, a, a, I believe the quote was, they looked like a bunch of a, apothecaries from the landscape, and they looked like a bunch of ducks and cross belts. So they were not a very well-trained militia force overall. But there were Rhode Island regiments that were involved also. Yes. <clears throat> um, anyway. Uh, there was a lot of action. The, 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 the Americans, the, the Rhode Islanders started up here at Fort Butts, but they actually formed their defenses down here uh, on uh, Greenman Hill, uh, which is just opposite what we know as uh, Green End Fort. 
Um, Green End Fort is, is not actually where the Green End Fort is today, but that's another story. Okay. Um, so th the Americans siege the British in Newport, and then when the French withdraw, don't the Americans kind of like retreat back up in the island and the British follow them? Yes, there was an, there was an action uh, the eve of the battle. Uh, the Varnum, there was a group of about 12 Varnum Continentals who w were down on Easton's Beach. They, run, they ran into uh, a band of British. They fired one shot, threw down their muskets, and ran. Yes. Um, but then the, the Americans, or the, 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 the colonists, retreated up the island again. And um, the battle actually started down uh, around here, which is where, uh, where Glen Farm is today. And it started as a running, a running battle. It, it, it went all the way up to, uh, to Fort Butts. Uh, and um, then the, 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 the colonists retreated to, uh, to Tiverton. Uh, the 1st Rhode Island Regiment, which is often called the Black Regiment, uh, provided the, the, the defense. They screened the, the British troops as, as, as the, uh, the, the colonists were evacuating the island. So they ran up toward? Butts Hill. Yes. But, it was okay. basically Correct. a stalemate battle where the British sieged across the valley up, up there where Butts Hill is. And, and uh, then the Americans, with Lafayette's help, who had gone up to Boston to try to get the French to re-engage and come down, actually supervises a withdrawal over into Tiverton, and the British take possession of the island. So it's really kind of a stalemate battle. Um, but it was kind of a feisty thing to do. And if it, the, it had succeeded, it would have been the Americans actually taking a British army like they did at Yorktown and they also did at Saratoga. So it would have been a major thing. Mm -hmm. But a total kind of like um, uh, an example of bad cooperation between the Allies at the beginning of the war. Yes. But it was uh, very successfully done. In other words, um, isn't this the war that... Uh, General uh, Lafayette said was the very well done. Yes, he said well it was one of the battle. best campaigns. Yes, and and it's ironic that we lost, but anyway, or we and, didn't lose. Like and no one knows. No about one it. knows. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the British won the battle mm -hmm. because according they, to 18th century uh, military rules, whoever holds the ground at the end of the day wins the battle. I can understand. The British that. held the field. Uh huh. <laughs> yes, they did. They got Newport. Just as they they did at Bunker Hill, the British won the Battle of Bunker Hill because they held the, the, the hill at the end of the day, but it sustained, cost them three times as, you know. Sustained three, many injuries or yeah, deaths. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the last thing I'd like to talk about again, and we would only touched on it, is Anne Hutchison and the fact that she was the first defender of democracy, woman she, defender. She of actually, democracy. her uh, settlement at Founders Brook, which is in Portsmouth, was, is cited as the first Western democracy. Uh, she actually formed a democratic government in um, at Founders Brook in Portsmouth. So it's really the the seat of American or of democracy in the Western Hemisphere. She ended up um, leaving uh, that area. She went down to New York, and she was actually um, tragically killed by Indians that were in uh, conflict with the Dutch. Uh, right around the Hutchinson Parkway area of New York, which is why it's called the Hutchinson Parkway. But Anne Hutchinson had quite a important beginning for the United States, in a way. Yes, and she which was. Which I had not known. I knew she had fled uh, to Rhode Island, but I didn't really know anything about her. A typical Rhode Island story. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It's so wonderful. I mean, Hillary should have read the book. Rhode Island is. Uh, it's a complex. Uh, and Norm's book's evidence that there's a complexity to the campaigns. We've just been skimming it right over. Yes. But uh, Norm's uh, research into the, the placement of the French regiments and uh, uh, basically the history, naval and uh, land, uh, really. We salute you. I mean, seriously, you've thank done you. an amazing work and you're going to pass it on from generation to generation. We thank you for all your research in these. One of the things I'd like to talk about is this map. Uh, th this map, I, I, th as I said, this is an overlay map um, with modern roads. And uh, I started uh, researching this because the British diaries have, particularly Frederick Mackenzie's diary, has very detailed accounts of what the British did day by day in, uh, in Newport. Um, and one of the things that he talks about is the 
the, or actually he doesn't talk about, is this defense line around the city of Newport, uh, which was uh, established, th this was done by the British between January 1st and June 30th, 1776. The, the pages that, uh, that would cover that part of the, the description uh, are missing from the diary. So we don't know what happened, uh, what they did, and how, uh, and how so this So if anybody out here has them, please give them to Norm. Oh, yeah. Um, so oh, I started doing this map to try to pinpoint where exactly did this line of defense run. I found that after I did this, I was getting more information from the, about the French. And because since I've mapped out the entire island, uh, I've been able to map where the French camps were, where the various French uh, activities were. So I'm getting more inc information from about the French because the French don't talk. They left us great maps, but they didn't give us any description of what they did. Uh, they talked about the social life in Newport, the pretty women, um, what they did. Uh, Très um, français. <laughs> <laughs> what they did uh, during the week, uh, social things, how, how they learned French, how they, uh, how, they, how they taught French to the locals, how they learned English from the locals and so on. And, but they don't talk about what they did. You know, we built this, uh, this fortification at this site, uh, as the British did. So that's, that's how this map uh, became, got generated. It's just really admirable. I love to see how um, researchers do history and you're making it so understandable. So thank you both for being here. You're welcome, thank you for having us. And the extra mile. <laughs> Please read. The Guide to American Revolutionary War in Canada and New England, if nothing else.